Gago Dimensión Latina FM Baja nuestra aplicación a través de Google Play Búscanos como Dime la FM Búscanos en TuneIn Radio Como Dimensión Latina FM Y visita nuestra página web Dime la FM punto com. Gracias, buenas tardes. Eh, ¿Cómo estamos? Esperemos que todos, todo el mundo esté muy bien ahorita con mucho frío, estén manejando en el tráfico. Um, tenemos un invitado muy especial el día de hoy en Vive de tus Rentas. Nos vamos a quedar con ese título. Entonces, eh, um, bueno, la semana pasada no tuvimos show desafortunadamente, pero hoy venimos bien cargados con la presencia de, a lo mejor, este, Freddy, si me puedes subir un poquito. Con la sí. presencia de una, um, una persona que tiene cinco años invirtiendo, gracias, invirtiendo en esto de bienes y raíces. Hoy no nos pudo acompañar la persona que teníamos prometidas, Matthew se quedó atorado en una conferencia en Florida. Eh, se fue a una conferencia para aprender cómo eh, a, a prestar dinero, el hard money lending, y nos va a, a poder ayudar con asistir con dinero eventualmente. Pero en su lugar nos hizo el favor de mandar a, a una persona que, bueno, está muy allegada a él. Eh, el nombre, su nombre es uh, Fernando Angelucci. Fernando es un, uh, lo que le llamamos un wholesaler en el negocio de bienes y raíces. El wholesaler es la persona que se dedica a buscar una propiedad, una oportunidad, la que se literalmente se enfría, se ensucia, hace de todo, calcula los números, pero lo voy a presentar para que él hable un poquito más de, 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 pues de lo que él hace. Fernando, um, thank you very much for being here. Vamos a hacer un, una traducción aquí este, entre, entre Freddy y yo, porque Fernando, pues él es, él es italiano y brasileño y no habla español. Son pero poquito. Un poquito. <risa> pero para propósito del, del show, vamos a, vamos a ayudarle aquí con la traducción. Así que vamos a, voy a comenzar y um, esperemos hacerlo ameno. Um, so, thank you, Fernando, yeah. for being here. I truly appreciate you jumping in the wagon the last minute. Yeah, so no worries. So, that was just last minute quick. But, however, um, and also, I'm so excited because the subject, the idea, your field, is so appealing right now to many, many, many people. So, I belong to a lot of these groups on, on um, online, and uh, Max Maxwell, which is super popular, um, he right now is like, moving so up like so quickly i don't know if you follow him no i haven't seen but it. anyway um and i see that this world of the wholesaling it's such an intriguing world even um uh, uh, grant cardon just learned about it yeah. he's like fascinated over it and i think it's great because being in, having been in the real estate industry for so long and having gone through the crash and having been down yeah i didn't know that there was that solution to my problem until now that yeah. i'm becoming an investor yeah. so i'm fascinated by it but i'm gonna let you talk about it uh, let's try to kind of slow down so i can kind of translate sure. everything okay sure. great so first tell us how did you start this business what got you into real estate period it was when i picked up a copy of rich dad poor dad written by robert kiyosaki that was the the first time that I, I even thought that real estate investment was an option. What did you, what made you do that? How did it you come up It was given to me, it was given to me by a teacher actually. 
by a t what, what, which teacher and which grade? Uh, actually, what, what, what subject? Yeah, it was reading. Okay. Uh, so the assignment was to read a, a fiction book, and at the time I didn't see the point in reading fiction. I said, you know, I don't really want to read this. Is there anything else I can do? And so she handed me a copy of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And so when I started reading that book, um, it opened up the idea to me that becoming an investor is a, is, is a possibility and that there's easier ways to get in than starting with a whole bunch of cash. And that's where the wholesaling came in. Well, the book doesn't speak about wholesaling. So I have a few questions. Sure. So first off, uh, what grade is this? And did you know that that some people speculate that that book is actually fiction? No kidding. I, uh -huh. didn't, I did not know that. So there is a big speculation out there that that's just a, the way to brought up the attention to the okay. people, but it's not necessarily. Now, I believe that I always believed that it was a true story. Yeah. Uh, but uh, eventually throughout the years, I learned that perhaps that's more like a, a way to entertain, to, to, to grab the attention of people. That, that would make sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. But it's still a great story. And it's very, um, it is a true story. I mean, we all live that story. Mm. I think about it when I went to uh, very uh, private schools in Mexico, so the way I would see people there um, that would have more money, so if you think about it, when I would go to their homes and enjoy their lavish lives, yes. those were my, perp my rich parents, mm. right? And then I would go home to no so lavish public transportation and no maid, right. so <laughs> that right. it became that. So mm. it's, it does exist. So let me take a little bit of time to talk a little bit in Spanish sure. about it. Um, eh, yo le, le pregunto a, a Fernando, eh, eh, es bien interesante esto que me platica porque eh, le pregunto a él cómo se convierte él en un inversionista. Él me comenta que empieza cuando su maestra de lectura les, les pone como tarea leer un libro de, fix, de ciencia ficción. A él no le interesó el libro de ciencia, de, de ciencia ficción y él eh, tomó en sus manos la, a, la um, habilidad de leer el libro de Rich Dad, Poor Dad, que es un libro escrito por el pionero, que ya lo hemos mencionado aquí. Freddy, no sé si lo recuerdas. Sí, claro. Hemos, eh, lo hemos mencionado. El pionero de, bien, de los bienes y raíces, ¿no? de las inversiones, de sí. por qué uno puede... Puede, se puede retirar uh, invirtiendo en bienes y raíces porque uno tiene que dejar de perseguir el, el um, de, de salir de la, lo que es la, la carrera de los ratones no del ratón y el creador del juego cash flow sí, uh, precisamente para enseñarnos cómo llegar a esa meta um, sorry about that so what teacher what grade was this yes yeah, so I was 16 years old so you weren't even not in you were in high school yeah I was in high school and so that was the first book that really drove home the fact that I could be a real estate investor now rich dad has a whole series of books past that book and then he's got the advisor series which is above that written by his various advisors you know Tom we, we, real Wheelwright did the uh, tax-free wealth version. Then there was Ken McElroy, which is, I believe, property management as well as putting together, you know, business plans. So it, it talked about 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 a, a, a you know a various subset Subjects. of topics. So yeah. uh, did you join the program? I know they have a program. Yeah, I did. So I did the uh, I did the boot camp, and then I did uh, I paid for the the higher level classes, and so the classes I took were. Uh, how to do underwriting mm -hmm. in so they called it core operations then the next one I took was wholesaling then I took lease options um, marketing and then commercial real estate were the five that I when took. you talk about underwriting this is like structuring a deal yeah doing Just the numbers the what should I buy right. it for how much it's gonna take to rehab sure what's the market like sure mm -hmm. sure that's the underwriting um, now th this is so intriguing I'm still curious to know, how do you get a hold of that book at such age? Because, again, she didn't give you the subject. She just gave you the, the, the um, genre of the book or the theme. Yeah, so, I mean, it just, what we don't realize is, you know, a lot of people use real estate um, as a secondary form of income, rental property. So you never know, your mailman might have rental, rental properties, you know, your, your teacher, your engineer, you know, a lot of people participate as, you know, the... Uh, Regardless of whatever uh, field they're working on, yeah. they, they already are savvy into the real estate world. Yeah, so it's a it's an asset that's very tax advantageous, um, and it offsets income very easily, which is great. So that's why I think 
it could have it could have been anybody, right? It could be you talking to anyone that just happens to do real estate on the side and So your teacher actually was the one giving you gave that. Me the book, yeah. Oh, that was so that's what a great gift. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So, that was great. And then um, once I took the classes, I really just started to first look for a mentor uh -huh. to guide me through the process. And then second was to continue my education as much as possible. So going to RIA meetings, going to um, uh, networking events and buying more books, watching you know YouTube videos. Things but like that. hold on a second, you're you're talking to me like you're talking like five, maybe ten years within conversation here, maybe five years at least, right? As far as as far as you getting been in, involved in doing all this. Yeah, so this was when this is right after I graduated from college. So I was 22 years old when I first started. So I'm still curious to go from 16 to college because you're at yeah. such a young age, and I'm just I really I mean when I met Matthew, one mm -hmm. of the the, the reasons I wanted to meet him, I just wanted to pick his brain. Why, I don't know, because I'm very curious. You know, I was very, also, I, I am very hungry and aggressive today, yeah. but it's fun to find somebody else because not everyone is like that. Yeah. So when you meet someone, you want to know what triggered that mind, what triggered that desire, what happened in their lives, whatever that is, right? Yeah. You just want to know, it's fun. Yeah, so both of my parents are immigrants from Brazil. Okay. They, I, grew up seeing them work their tails off. I mean, they worked very hard to give me and my brother a, you know, a middle-class lifestyle and, you know, allow us to, to go to good schools. Um, I, I think it does come down to a little bit of personality. Uh, on all the personality assessments I take, like the DISC profile or the Myers-Briggs test, I come out as a very extroverted person that is also very um, economically driven, some classic entrepreneur, uh, you know, personality assessment. I love, I'm very intrinsically motivated. I love to challenge myself and to set goals and try to complete those goals. Um, and real estate is one of those things that you are truly in control of your future. Whereas, you know, when you, if you work at a nine to five, there, you can work your tail off too, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to those that are above you that if, you know, if they're gonna decide to give you a promotion or not. Absolutely, I, that's something I try to imply all the time is like stop doing that. Like I, yesterday I read a, on one of my Facebook friends wrote, I'm looking for a $500 max um, apartment to rent in certain uh, little village. I shouldn't, okay. no, no, Pilsen. I have to name the neighborhood because that way we know that's probably impossible. Yeah. I, it's hard for me not to do this. He's a young fellow in my running community. And the first thing that I just threw out there, I'm gonna tell you how you can live for free in a two unit apartment that's stock. Yeah. I'm still waiting for that. Mm. I mean, for free. Yeah. I, it's just so, it's so, I want to, I wanna bring the young fellows, I wanna bring anybody to just to show, to hear your story and, and, and just how it, it's easy. It really yeah. is an easy situation, right? Yeah. Um, let me just go a little bit in Spanish because it, I think it's so important. Sure. This is a goal. Yeah, so, um, me comenta, yo estoy fascinada con, con haber conocido a Fernando Freddy porque es un muchacho tan joven con, con la idea. Él se da cuenta. Yo creo que todos tenemos la habilidad de tener una, una motivación y todos buscamos lo mismo en general, ¿no? Subir, salir adelante. Pero no todos tenemos la fortuna de encontrarnos con la oportunidad de nuestro, de, de reconocer nuestro regalo de nosotros mismos sí. y tomar el camino hacia, pues a donde realmente nuestros padres sacrificaron para que nosotros viniéramos para acá y él tuvo la oportunidad de verlo y no nada más de verlo, también tuvo la suerte de que un maestro, un líder le presenta la oportunidad, él la ve, entonces se, se fue todo un circuito de energía, ¿no? Um, me tiene fascinada eso y lo único que quiero decir es posible, todos lo podemos hacer. Yo lo hice de la nada, también vine sin papeles, tuve que pasar por legalizarme, indocumentada trabajé, todos pasamos por ahí. Y sí, ahorita ya estoy mucho más cómoda, pero fue un proceso y, también, y todo es posible y se puede sin dinero. Y yo lo he hecho con un mal crédito, sin dinero, Um, y, y él viene a hablar de un tema al que quiero llegar bien padre, um, el tema de, de wholesaling. Uh, ¿Cómo podemos comenzar a hacer dinero en bienes y raíces sin un centavo? 
Es Quieres muy importante, es muy importante Corina, y, la, y aparte de todo que Fernando tomó la decisión de cambiar su vida, ¿no? Y estar eh, como está ahora, y así está mucha gente en este momento eh, tratando de, de cambiar su vida, eh, y simplemente tienen que tomar esa decisión para que puedan hacer ese cambio. Si lo piensan demasiado, la verdad, otras personas lo van a hacer por ustedes, así que hay que tomar esa decisión, ¿no? Exacto. Eh, dos cosas que quiero demostrar. Una es que él era bien joven, a pesar de tener una carrera, Uh, las personas que voy a traer en las siguientes tres semanas, todas tienen una carrera. Sí. Dejaron todo por seguir su sueño, tener su libertad, su libertad financiera, trabajar para ellos mismos, viajar cuando ellos quieren, irse a las conferencias. Uh, y, y cada quien tiene su, sus razones por qué uno quiere tener una libertad financiera. Y ellos las están viviendo. Son jóvenes. Quiero que todas las personas vean que no importa la edad, no importan las experiencias, no importa que tengan una carrera donde ganen mucho dinero, también sacrifican eso, eso es bien importante. La, la cuestión aquí es querer y tomar acción. So, I'm going to turn back to you, because yeah. I do want to talk about the subject that I, I like to push the most to new, to new people that are curious about real estate, about investing, is the wholesaling subject. Yeah. Uh, obvious reasons it's cheap it's easy well it's easy to us that we understand right. but for someone that doesn't understand anything about it and then they, they just hear oh it's easy it's cheap what do we mean about it could you tell us what wholesaling is to start yeah. with please okay so to start wholesaling is when you find someone that is willing to sell their property at uh, a discount to market value and then find an investor that will buy that property Now, how you do that is by placing the property under contract with the seller as you as the buyer, and then you assign your contract rights as the buyer to a new investor. And that new investor will then uh, take your shoes in the contract, pay you a fee for that right, and then close at the title company with the seller. Well, that sounds very easy. <laughs> <laughs> I can probably do that too. Right. <laughs> how are they going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> So the easiest ways to start is always to build up both sides of the list. Um, you're going to have to start getting a pipeline of sellers that want to sell. How do you find these people, right? There's very easy ways to do it. You can do direct marketing where you send letters to properties that would be. But I'm broke. So there's there's <laughs> there's ways that you can do it without spending any money in the so beginning. I don't as have well. any money. I'm okay. like I can barely. I can wait for my next paycheck. Yeah. But I am willing to commit a couple of hours on the weekends, Perfect. maybe three four hours, yep. because I can't stand this anymore. What so, do I do? So there's two types of marketing. One is to is to pay money for marketing and to save you time. But in the other way, the way I started as well. There's a way to the, where you you basically spend time and you save Sweat money. Equity, Sweat right? equity, right? Sweat equity, right? So, uh, one of the easiest ways is to start combing through Zillow for any of the for sale by owner properties, giving them calls and so, trying to negotiate. So, Zillow si, si es una buena opción, perdón, para poder encontrar propiedades. ¿Cómo encontramos las propiedades? ¿Qué es el wholesaling? El wholesaling es una transacción donde uno va a encontrar una propiedad que tenga que, que esté debajo del valor del mercado porque necesita reparaciones o necesita que se ponga al día cosméticamente a la, la moda de hoy probablemente necesita nada más cosmético reparaciones cosméticas o puede necesitar completamente ser remodelada porque hay mercado para todo uno entra en contrato con esa propiedad toca la puerta del del dueño Señor quiere vender o puede, estoy interesado en su casa, yo soy inversionista, quiero comprar, se pone verbalmente, perdón, escritamente, en un, el contrato se pone por escrito y entonces ustedes van y lo promocionan con vendedores y compradores que quieren comprar esas propiedades pero que no tienen el tiempo de hacer el trabajo que ustedes están haciendo para que entonces ustedes le puedan vender sus derechos del contrato a esta persona por una determinada cantidad, esa se determina dependiendo de la propiedad y lo que ustedes quieran ganar y que tanto quieran vender y este inversionista entonces va a pagar la propiedad, va a remodelar y va a vender o se va a quedar con ella. Entonces son como el, la persona de en medio. Suena bien interesante, suena bien fácil, pero le pregunto ¿cómo hacemos esto? Me comenta él que a dos, dos formas, una es si tiene uno un poquito de dinero, pagando mercadotecnia de la que vamos a hablar, pero yo le digo, no tengo, no tengo dinero, 
ya no quiero trabajar, trabajo de lunes a viernes, soy mamá soltera, lo único que estoy dispuesto a hacer es invertir tres o cuatro, seis horas. Mm. Realísticamente seis horas uno puede invertir el fin de semana para hacer una búsqueda y él me comenta, lo más fácil y lo más barato es en Zillow. Nos ponemos a Zillow, Zillow.com. Perfecto. Ahora, ¿qué hacemos en Zillow? So once you get to Zillow, the best thing is to find the for sale by owners. So they're usually marked, I believe, with red dots, mm -hmm. and you can sort for just those. Oh, so there's a strategy also to find those guys. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so usually when a realtor is involved, the price is not going to be, you can't get it low enough where a wholesaler will be able to make Because someone has to pay for that commission. Right. So Zillow's a, a great way to find properties, call up the seller and see if they're willing to sell. Uh, get it under contract at a price that makes sense when you said call the seller we're calling the seller because we're going for the for sale by owners correct, correct? because if we call the realtor the realtor will won't let us talk to the seller right. correct okay correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep and then uh uh other easy avenues that you can use that don't require a lot of capital is going to craigslist.com and looking for sale by owner there, going to for sale by owner .com. There's another one there. Okay. Um, driving for dollars is one of my favorites. So just driving up and down the streets of areas that you think. So when you say that, so I'm familiar with that, but mm -hmm. I, I have to, you know, sure. speak for the public. Uh, when you say that, I hear driving for dollars, I'm gonna go drive and someone is gonna be throwing me dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Please explain. Yeah, okay. so driving for dollars is when you're driving your target area. So whatever, I always recommend people What's start my, small. Mm -hmm. What's start my small. target area? Start in neighborhoods that you're familiar with. Start Maybe in, where I grew up. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Start in, or maybe the neighborhood around where you work. So some area that you're always around that you have noticed different properties in the area. Why is that, imp what's that my target, should be my target area? So the target area, there's a few ways to, that you can pick this. The easiest way is to first start in areas that you're very familiar with because you can tell what the trends in the area are, what blocks are starting to become more valuable, which ones are starting to lose value. And then basically wholesalers will make money on the, the areas in between those, the l dividing lines. You buy something for very cheap in the depressed area pricing and then you sell it for you know a lot more using the, the higher valued areas pricing valuations. I yep. see. Mm -hmm. So another strategy there. <laughs> yeah. So so when you're driving for dollars, usually the easiest thing to look for are properties that are dilapidated or need a lot of work. You can tell there's a lot of clear signs. The paint is chipping, the roof is missing shingles, the grass is overgrown or maybe it's not plowed in the winter and it's just piling up. If you see any, you know, large piles of, of newspapers and, and mail being delivered that's clearly not being taken in. It might be a vacant property. These are all signs that you have a distressed asset on your hands in a seller that would be potentially motivated to sell at a, uh, a, a drastic discount to, to market value. So, um, in very interesting. And you think they will be motivated because... Yeah, if they're not living in the property, I mean, they're, they're still paying. expensive. Huh? Yeah, they're still paying taxes on it. Or if they're not paying taxes, then. Um, Unless utilities, maybe, or insurance. Utilities. If, the they're if they're responsible, they're paying all of that. Yeah, if I mean, but we come across properties where they're not. You know, we get calls from people where they haven't paid their taxes for three years, and then all of a sudden they found a letter sa stating that their property is going to be auctioned off at the, you know, the sheriff's sale and uh, they're gonna lose all their equity in the house, right? Now, that's another whole subject out there, even with the wholesaler, right? Yeah. Because depending on the stage and such. So, so, so that's the intriguing part about real estate. There are so many ways to make money, and yeah. this being the easiest one of them, literally. Um, but um, yeah, so that's basically the, the, the um, sorry, go ahead, continue. <laughs> yeah, so these are some of the ways that you can do it without any, um, any investment of capital, just an investment of time. Uh, you're going to want to start getting your first whole wholesale deals and putting aside a large portion of the proceeds to go towards marketing so you can start saving more more time and, and spending for the marketing and getting a larger volume. Another way to uh, find properties that you can wholesale without spending much money or, or any at all is to go down to the county courthouse. If you go down to the county courthouse, you can search the, te the records to see if there's any probate cases. So probate cases when somebody dies without a, an estate plan in place. So it puts the public on notice or any creditors on notice that um, 
you know, this person passed away, and if you're going to settle any any type of bills owed, now is the time to do it. So, pardon, I'm curious about that. Mm -hmm. Very uh, personally interested. Um, so, does that not have a process, a legal process of certain period? So, how do I know when when is the property really going to go be exit in the probate? <laughs> yeah. So, once the probate case file is filed with the county, um, usually, if not immediately or within a short period of time after that, the executor is named, and the executor or the executrix is the person that has the authority and power to. Um, to dispose of any assets to settle the estate bills. Could be a family member, could be just an attorney or anybody, Friend, yeah. anybody that the person would have assigned. Yeah, exactly. How, what's your um, a positive response rate with those fellows? Yeah, um, so industry standard for direct mail is usually about half to 1% response rate. Um, we used to get those type of response rates when we first started, but now we've really honed in our marketing through split testing and uh, using lists that have you know a couple different metrics of motivation in them, and our response rates are now anywhere between 4 and 5% uh, for the probate and the absentee owner. So what leads. I'm hearing is that each... Each field, per se, has a different marketing strategy? Absolutely. So you don't use the same one? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, so if somebody's going, you know, is in pre-foreclosure and is facing a foreclosure auction, you need to approach that Immediately. person differently and with more urgency than you would, say, somebody that's going through a probate situation because then, you know, there's a lot of emotions there and maybe it was their husband or wife that passed away. You have to, you have to approach it with softer kind of kid gloves, you see. Um, then there's the, you know, tired landlords, investors that they took a shot at it and they either for whatever reason they didn't do too well or maybe it's time that they cash out of their investments or what have you. Um, they are, you know, you got to approach them differently as well. They're a savvy uh, person. They know how to negotiate. They know what the value of their property is worth. And for those, you have to truly just be matter of fact and say, hey, you're either trying to get out or you're in the middle of an eviction and you need to get out. You know what I do. I'm a wholesaler. So like for me to to move this property for you to solve this problem that you have, you have to give it to me at a at a amount that one of my investors would be willing to pay for it and still have enough in it to pay me a fee for doing all that marketing for them. Right? The the reason why wholesalers make money is because the the cash buyers that have moved beyond this stage they're, they're doing so much volume of either flipping or, or doing buy and hold that they don't have time to do what we do, which is find the property, sort through, you know, the 60 to 70 calls that are going to say no to you first to get that one contract that's going to say, yes, I'll sign at that price. You know, that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of money. Um, Knowledge, too. I yeah, mean, exactly. So you have to invest the time. In yeah, to you, have to, you have to learn the markets. You have to know what investors are, are getting at the time, what the you know rates for the rates and terms for leverage are because that's mm -hmm. going to change the way that buyers buy what their criteria are going to be um, are the taxes going up or the taxes going down that's also going to affect everything that comes down to the what they're willing to pay what price they're willing to pay for that property so do you say um, is there a set fee standard that people would make I wouldn't say no and it really it really comes down to how well you're able to negotiate right so um, there are I have noticed some differences between uh, property types so usually you can get a larger fee when the property itself is worth a lot more you know it's a lot easier to carve out a fifty thousand dollar fee on a million dollar property than it is to carve out you know a five thousand dollar fee on a fifty thousand dollar property right well that's an extreme example mm -hmm. but let's say on a five on a million dollar however that high i mean it's also the remodel i mean we're talking about a different pocket yeah here. so um i'll give you some examples i'll give you two opposite sides of the examples um on the low end i was in iowa i put a property under contract for five thousand dollars and then i wholesaled that one about a week later for twelve thousand so i made a seven thousand dollar spread on a five thousand dollar property but right property. right so it's good <laughs> that's good. a very good margin yeah right, it's good right, ratio right, it's a margin right. you know percentage wise yes. but then i also did a property in the northern suburbs of chicago i put under contract for 1.179 million and then i wholesaled it for 1.25 million 
and we made a, about a seventy-eight thousand dollar wholesale on that one. So, but that was seventy-eight thousand on a million, as opposed to seven thousand on five thousand. So, which one does really hurt more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but to kind of so like we'll take those outliers out of the way. Our, our company has been providing wholesale properties to investors in the Chicago land area for almost five years now, and what we typically get are properties that are in the two hundred thousand to. Three hundred thousand dollar range would be the median property price, and so we're we're talking of I'm sorry, first time home buyer. Yeah, I mean it could be that, or it can be large multifamily in maybe some more depressed areas. You know, mm -hmm. you can get a three or a four flat, maybe a six flat for you know two hundred thousand. I, I got areas. an eight. I got an eight unit for well, I was listed for a four hundred, but I knocked down a hundred. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. super perfect example. Yep. And then our average fee over the last trailing 12 months has been i think around seventeen thousand dollars per property as that's, the average i mean if that's an average that's really yeah, that's good a, that's so an average about over 50 properties about. that's really good yeah. mm -hmm. um so when you talk about your company elaborate <laughs> yeah so um this is a, a an awesome business that you can start on yourself but if you really want to scale and bring it to the next level and treat it like a real business, I have found that partnership and partnering is the easiest way to get to that point. Um, our the support is always so important. I don't see anybody, even if a so husband and wife, sometimes, yeah. you know, you have to have that support. I, yeah, absolutely. That's my challenge, but go on. I'm yeah, sure. so I, um, my, my business partner, Stephen Ware, he's the other half. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more the analytical, he's more the creative type. So we, we mesh very well. And then we, we, Stephen and I, in our company, Titan Wealth, we partner with other investors that are doing their own things, other wholesalers. You know, I've taught a lot of new wholesalers in the past and every once in a while they'll get a property that they can't move on their own. They'll just give me a call and I'll find a buyer for them. I think we have, you know, a little over 6,100 buyers in the Chicago land area that get our emails with properties. How did you come across such lists? Yeah, it just How took, did you build it? I'm it, sorry. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just took years to build it. So um, So what did you do? What was your strategy? Because I think what I find in, in just in general, mm -hmm. in gen in any industry, I think the reason why we don't treat it as a business is because for example, just quickly a real estate, people just go to real estate they don't teach you to run it as a business so just mm. teach you to do the real estate side right, right? so um uh, gary keller has this fantastic book the the uh, um, millionaire real estate agent i'm not sure if you read it yeah no i haven't read that one but I basically read where they books. tell their people and probably why i feel like uh, keller williams uh, brokers are the most successful brokers because they're taught this philosophy to build up systems, strategies, teams, yeah. and then to set goals and actually document everything. Just just build up a business yeah, <laughs> the way it's supposed to. Yeah, absolutely. There's a great book I can recommend to help you put together a framework to operate a business. It's called Traction by Gina Wickman. Traction by Gino Wick Wickman. Como, how do you spell yeah, that? W I C K M A N. Lo ponemos Freddy. Traction by Gino. It's, <laughs> it's a great book um, and it teaches you how to manage your company in the same ways that you'd manage the actual real Day estate that you're doing. Okay. So for example, having a meeting every week with all the employees or if it's if you're the only employee having a meeting each week for, with right. yourself, going right. over the scorecard numbers, making sure that you're tracking everything, that you have metrics on all your campaigns, which ones are doing best, which ones are not doing good, where should I put the money? It's these are very important things to do because a lot of us, when we first start doing, you know, start running a business, we don't keep score of anything. We don't even know how much profit we're making or how much is revenue and how much is net profit. I think what our only score is the bank account. <laughs> yeah, and where are we paid? And so the problem with only using your bank account is that is a, uh, it's not a forecasting number. It's a number that you get afterwards. So you may check your bank bank account and realize that oh you know I have only five thousand dollars left and you didn't budget money for say marketing and marketing is like if you stop your marketing that's like pulling an engine out of a car it'll keep moving for a little bit but then it's eventually gonna stop to a halt right so important so budgeting where are your numbers where are your metrics to get to those numbers how many calls do I need to be getting a day how many of those calls do I need to turn into an appointment how many of those appointments do I need to turn into a contract that's, that's another conflict we have real or anybody that's a self-employed right because we 
are self-employed if we work from home we don't have that um, structure yeah. we don't know how to so it's so important i recently met a, a loan officer that went through a uh, core training mm -hmm. and she's pushing me it's so i, I am a, I like to bring numbers, definitely a numbers person, I mean a producer. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I know that I'm leaving money on the table mm -hmm. because I'm, uh, all my clients are on post-its yeah. and it's terrible. I mean, I need to go to the you next level yourself. and that's what she's doing for me. And I bet she, you know what she said, in fact, how many brokers do you have coming to you to do this because I want to be a part of that group? Yeah. And she looked at me and she said, none. Like, what do you mean, none? Yeah. And she said to me, uh, because I asked her to hold me accountable, it's like verbatim, no one wants to be held accountable. It's hard. And, you know, there's a few of us out there that, you know, we really, all we need is just intrinsic motivation. We can motivate ourselves, but that's very difficult and that's very rare. You need to have somebody holding you accountable. You know, even as a person, so even as a go-getter, I consider myself one so, you know, I wake up I do like to train for marathons you were describing yourself as uh, looking for goals I'm always doing that yep. I'm a, a, forget, creating a little non-for-profit mm -hmm. and, and and running around with the properties negotiating and creating deals for my clients yep. and I wake up every day to run swim bike so motivation lots of it mm -hmm. lots of energy but there is this like guidance is part of you know that, that that's missing that I'm looking everywhere for yeah. assistance and uh, looking for partners it's so hard like you said you have to find the right partner to really make it happen right all the books and, and companies that i read about it's just about they all think they're employees right um but um we're going the side of the subject here no, um fine. let's uh, go back to the uh house and so we have the marketing going mm -hmm. we made a little bit of money now we plan we're following the structure we found the deal. We have a nice list of buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Yeah, We're and I'd, I'd like to back up a little bit. So we okay. talked we talked about the, um, the getting the seller list, but a, an equally important part is getting the buyer list together. So here's a, a couple of tips you can use that also don't cost any money. Uh, one is that you just go and look at the tax records. Anytime you get a property in a contract, you look in a three or four block radius around that, that property. And if you look at the tax records, some of those properties will be owned by entities, LLCs or C-Corps or mm -hmm. S-Corps. Those are probably cash buyers. Send them a letter or call them or find their website and say, hey, you know, I saw that you owned a property three blocks from this property I'm trying to sell. Would you be interested? Another way is to go to these networking events, going to the RIA meetings, the Real Estate Investor Association meetings. Um, there's a ton of networking events around the you know, city of Chicago here, and I'm sure in, in your proper cities as well. And just meeting people that have money that will be are buying properties, um, going to the auction. You can find property buyers there as well. So I um, I saw a comment today this morning at one of the ho ho women wholesaling real estate, mm -hmm. and the lady in several uh, groups actually she posted. I want to create. This is the first thing she's doing. She's not done her deal before. I want to create my business cards. What should I use use as a title? I should have just said use this as a title, but I have trouble not guiding people. So my reaction was to say, you should just get a deal. You don't need a business card. Yep. If you bring people deals, oh, because she, she responded eventually to somebody else mm -hmm. um, that she wanted to have a title because she wants people to remember her. Uh, remember what she does when they read her card and I said you don't even need a business card just mm -hmm. need a deal because people will remember you when you bring them the deals yeah, what I, do you say to that I I always recommend what you recommend I think it's if you're just starting out don't waste money on things like a website or a business card or anything like that the, all your money should be going to marketing finding a buy, uh, finding a seller and a buyer once you get one or two deals in place and that have paid you, then start using the money from the deals to buy some business cards or a website or set up an, an LLC or a, a S Corp or C Corp, whatever you want to use. But that should not be the first thing you do because that's a lot of money that you're taking away from the marketing funnel. So just to give you guys a, an idea, in our business, um, every dollar we put in produces about $4 out, okay? so. Instead of me, say I, I start with $10, if I put four of those dollars towards a business card and then another $2 towards a website, I only have $4 left, that $4 can only make me $16, right? Mm -hmm. 
or I can take all $10. I can put that into marketing, which gives me a one to four conversion. I'll make $40. And with that $40, I'll take $2 for a website and a $4, at least because then I still have a lot, a lot more money for marketing. You should never spend, it's an agriculture term, never eat your seed corn, right? Because <laughs> then you can't grow anything if you're eating the, the seeds that are going to grow what you want to eat. Sure, sure. So that's what I say. In the beginning, all money goes to marketing. Once you get a few deals closed, then you can start spending, you know, always take marketing money out first. And if there's anything left over, then start spending it on, um, you know, on, on business cards and, and websites sure, and stuff. Sure, sure. And now the marketing being the least expensive, the driving for dollars. Yes. Okay, so. So ga cost of gasoline. I would the, say the, the least gasoline, expensive the would light. be, <laughs> I'd say the internet would be the cheapest one. Then. The cheapest. Oh, I do have a question about that. So I went to Craigslist once and I found nothing but another. Wholesalers yep. advertising their properties all over. So. Yeah, so why don't you I, call I those wholesalers and uh, just ask if you could buy them a beer show them how they how they found that property they're advertising ask them to put you on their list their cash buyer list so you can see how they the deals that they're sending out what are they priced at for those neighborhoods so you can start to see what is the correct price if they ha need rehab see how much they estimate the rehab to be so you can start learning from them absolutely you've just hit it in the nail you know um I'm, it's just the same thing that i'm doing with facebook which is picking up every time i say someone that i think it's whoa i want to meet this person mm -hmm. i literally just write them a message and yeah. i just buy them lunch yeah so uh but i guess on facebook it's easier because you can see their faces yeah. uh, it makes it easier but i think sure. no one ever thought about doing that on, on craigslist but let me see if i can put something in spanish yeah. here <laughs> um so amigos muy muy importante la plática está super interesante porque eh, a, a pesar de que se ve como una situación muy, muy complicada, no lo es. O sea, uno puede comenzar este negocio sin dinero, eh, eh, organizándose nada más. Hay que aprender muchísimo, hay mucha información en el Internet. Ahora, ¿cómo, cómo es la manera más fácil, eh, la menos complicada? Javier, que tiene todo el tiempo manejando, él ya debería de tener como 200 propiedades en su portafolio. Eh, la, la mejor manera es empezar, por ejemplo, con el, la colonia donde, donde nacimos, el barrio donde vivimos. ¿Por qué? Porque obviamente conocemos, sabemos dónde se están mejorando las casas, en qué calles se están en, en, en mejorando o empeorando, obviamente. Mm. Y por, porque conocemos, probablemente vamos a conocer a las personas que puedan comprar, rentar o, y, o a los vecinos que quieran vender. Comenzamos por ahí. Um, de ahí, como coment, nos comenta Fernando, tenemos que tener la mentalidad de tratar esto como un negocio. Si realmente queremos retirarnos de este negocio, tenemos que empezar a dividir el dinero. Eh, lo más importante es invertir en la mercadotecnia. Nos dice él, si no invertimos dinero en mercadotecnia, cualquiera que ésta sea, es como no tener un brazo. Entonces, eventualmente podemos trabajar con un brazo, pero vamos a necesitar los dos, ¿no? Um, es súper importante tener este dinero para la mercadotecnia. Una vez invirtiendo con eso, no, se, no preocuparnos tanto. Le di el ejemplo de una persona muy, muy interesada en enfocada en cosas que no son tan importantes, que son como tarjetas de presentación o eh, sitios de, de, de web o también este... Um, sitios de web, tarjetas de presentación o cualquier otra cosa que realmente no nos va a proporcionar. The Perdón. The entities creating. Oh, entity o creando, first. creando, pagando por crear lo que es un LLC, una compañía, ¿no? Sí. Hay que pagar como 500 dólares. Sí, por lo menos. Exacto. Entonces, mejor esos 500 dólares se organizan ese fin de semana que tenemos cuatro horas nada más, empacan a los niños, les ponen su lunch y se van a manejar. Y puede uno hacer hasta un zigzag, ¿no? Empezar mm -hmm. sistemáticamente. Y las casas que ustedes vean con periódicos, que noten que les falten los, los cuadritos a los techos, los shingles, eh, o que las plantas las tengan crecidas, o que la nieve no la hayan limpiado, o que el vecino se le esté cayendo la cerca al vecino, cosas que, o que, les ten, o que no tenga luz en las noches, ¿no? Que también que estén manejando, que no haya luz. O, um, usted, esa es la manera de encontrar a la propiedad. Ahora, para encontrar al dueño hay maneras muy fáciles que es tocar la puerta y como nos comentó eh, Ricardo la vez pasada si el dueño normalmente no está los vecinos what do you think of the neighbors are those good, good yeah, source of absolutely. leads absolutely okay. absolutely so when we canvas neighborhoods and drop flyers you know we always knock on the doors and say hey do you know anybody in the area that's looking to sell their house for cash 
nice. Mm. So what flyers do you drop off? Are those fancy flyers? Can I just yeah, print no, them out on the computer? Yeah, it really depends. So uh, we've outsourced a lot of the door knocking to uh, newer wholesalers that are looking to get into the game and don't have a lot of money to do that. I just tell them what neighborhoods to go and they just start knocking on doors and you know, you can get things printed for tra very cheap or even print them at home. You know, just knocking on the doors enough or leaving a little business card that instead of it having your name on it, it just states what you can do with a with a, a number. Say, hey, we buy properties for cash. Don't you don't need to repair anything, even if they're outdated or need work. We buy in in all conditions. You know, give me a call, Fernando. Here's my number. So that card's already printed. Yeah. You already you can, order it. Yeah, you can you can order those. But again, if you're just looking for ways that are super cheap, that's cheap too. Just get right? a just get a <laughs> post-it note pad and just write. <laughs> I want to buy your house for cash. Call me at this number and just stick them on doors. People call you on those yeah. little posts. It's amazing mm -hmm. what people do, huh? Yeah. I mean, if you walked home, you know, say you just went grocery stocking, grocery uh, uh, shopping, you just came back and there was a note on your door with a number saying, I'd like I'll to buy curious. your house for cash. <laughs> would you at least call them or shoot them a text message maybe? I or would. I would, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Totally. No, that's true. No, and it's true. And it, there's a whole um, underground population of you guys yeah. right mm -hmm. i mean it's uh, the thing is what i encounter with the um with my clientele my niche because we don't take that initiative to go search for more yeah. just because we don't know we don't know what we don't know right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um it's so new to them so it's so easy to think that this is an, a quick scheme if you will you know right. a, qu a quick way to make money it's by no by, by any means quick yeah it's, you really it, have to you really have to work at it yeah you do have to do the same thing that you were doing should you have gone to what did you go to school for uh ag bioengineering uh, pardon yeah <laughs> yeah so i, I english por favor <laughs> yeah. uh so i was a ag bioengineer so agriculture and biological engineering you know dealt a lot with pesticides herbicides i was gonna say what was the goal there what was your goal yes yeah, so i was in ag sales so I, I would sell chemicals to farmers to use on their uh on their land is that what's happening in that industry i you know i don't know i haven't been in the industry for about five years <laughs> I, I was catching up with some some old co-workers recently but i'm, I'm glad i'm not in the industry right now <laughs> that's that's all we have to say about it huh good, good thing brick and mortars are here yeah. <laughs> that's great um so uh, so when do you start that's what i'm curious so you have this the, this degree you study so hard for how many years four years is, i went to school for that degree and i hope your parents didn't pay for it yeah <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so what, what did they say when you said no more bio blah blah yeah blah. no so at first uh my you know my parents were just hesitant because of you know i told them hey i think i can really make uh some good money in in real estate investments and but, i see it but a they already there. saw you going to kawasaki because they were around oh, yeah, you yeah. when you were spending all this money yeah right? yeah so i had you know i had all the books with me and you know, I talked to my, my, my parents about what I was reading and the events I was going to. Uh, so they saw me kind of progress through it um, all the way up until the point where, you know, at first they were like, okay, you, at least you got a degree you can fall back on. Um, but I don't exactly know what you're doing out there. I tried to explain wholesaling a few times. Sure. And now they understand. I think my, my dad even invested in one of my wholesale campaigns where he gave us marketing money. And nice. Then, and then we, so another easy way to get started is to do partnerships. So this was actually my dad that did it. He wasn't the first one. Uh, the only reason I brought him in is because he saw me writing checks to other investors and he said, where are my checks? <laughs> so I said, invest like, with I'll me. I'll show you how. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, one of our very first wholesale campaigns that was pretty l on large on scale. So I'm talking, you know, over 30,000 mail pieces. Um, we you outsource all this, right? Now we do, yeah. Okay, yeah, but so those you weren't, you were folding at, yourself. No, at, at that time we were outsourcing them. So uh, I started doing everything myself, like in envelopes and printing and <laughs> oh, mailing and writing hand addressed envelopes. Uh, but then we ended up outsourcing to a fulfillment company to do that all that for us. So we got the capital from one of our investors. Uh, I think the first amount that he gave us was like ten grand to just put straight into marketing. Mm -hmm. And then we paid him, I believe, 50% of the wholesale fee. And then the next time he wanted to put in money, uh, he gave us 30 grand. Um, now we had a proven concept. So then we started doing the marketing as well. And then uh, we split the proceeds three ways on that one. I, I'm curious to know that a structure, I mean, is this per time? So 10,000 until you find the property? So how it was is uh, 
I, we went to them and said, hey, here's the list that we want to hit. You know, whatever the criteria was, mm-hmm. probate owners, sure. you know, three to five bedrooms or whatever. And um, this is our work campaign. Yeah. So this is our campaign. Here's how we get them under contract. Here's our track record right now. Or if you don't have a track record, say, here's what I've learned from other people. And that's here's their track records. Right. Borrow their credibility. Um, and as the deals come in, we'll do everything. You don't have to do anything. And every time we get a wholesale check, we'll cut you your portion of that wholesale check. of this list until of this, this list until this list drives yes, now exactly. we're going to target a different list now we need thirty thousand dollars for this one mm-hmm. okay exactly. okay mm-hmm. and they are happy as long as they caught the recoup their first investment oh yeah yeah and they and that we actually stopped doing those partnerships because it was so lucrative for our too, partners too many they were just <laughs> yeah. putting the money and making <laughs> yeah exactly uh, there was a few deals where you because know there's really big, big you deals. guys are really not losing anything i mean right. you can you can make this thing grand in one property yeah so i mean that's you know so now you can't afford your own marketing like that right so that's that's, that's how you you know so there's ways that you can partner if you know anybody that has a couple thousand dollars laying around and they want to partner with you or to a do credit marketing card or I a mean, credit card the thing is the thing here is you have to be committed right and, and not even knowledgeable committed to learn and open-minded to learn right yeah, so i'll give you a crazy story please um, <laughs> So speaking of credit cards, I do not recommend people do this, but I'll tell you how I did Don't it. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. So the way that I got my first large amount of marketing dollars was I went out and in one night I applied for like 64 credit cards. And on the first round, I got around eight of them approved for a total credit limit of like 97 or $99,000. You were 20. 20- Two 22 old. yeah and then okay, i no. <laughs> and then i uh, cash advanced uh, like ninety five thousand dollars off of them, the max that they'd let me cash advance who, who even taught you how to do that how I, did you i know learned that? it at one of the like you were weekend, too smart for your own good <laughs> no i learned it at one of the like weekend seminars Renata's. I <laughs> yeah it was uh it was a kiyosaki uh-huh. uh, event that i went sure to. sure yeah rich did and so that's what I did. I cash it. It's very risky. So you, you know? went there, to, and then that particular night, you went and applied for these things? Yeah, so in one night, I, I applied for an insane amount of credit cards, and the first batch got approved. And the way that, that I did it was I get approved for you know all these 0% credit cards because my credit was all right at the time. Um, it was like a 760 or something. And that's for a lot of people very good but <laughs> yeah yeah and there's books out there showing you how you can and I and I built up my credit to get to that point doing some tricks I learned like mm-hmm. you can call it like if you have any credit cards at all make sure that you're paying them off each month if you're not paying them off make sure that you do multiple payments a month oh. more than the minimum because that, sh- that reflects on the credit sure. score and then uh, once you have them all paid off start increasing your credit limits as much as possible because one of the one of the ratios you get is called a credit credit utilization rate it's 35 percent of your credit score oh. and that is the ratio of how much debt you're using over the total amount of debt that's available for you so say you owe a thousand dollars on a thousand dollar credit card limit you're at a hundred percent utilization mm-hmm. that drops your score a lot now say in that same amount of time you still have a thousand dollars in credit card debt but you open ten thousand dollars worth of credit card lines now you're using a thousand over ten thousand so you only have a 10% utilization rate, which pushes your credit score back up. So there's artificial ways to manipulate your credit score. And then once you get them above a 760, you, you, all three scores have to be above a 760. 760 and above is considered perfect credit. Not perfect, but very, very good credit mm-hmm. that all the offers out there, the best offers are available to you. Okay. So you can get you know, all these 0% credit cards for 12 or 18 months. But just suggest not because- Do not do this. What happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I pulled out a lot of, debt and it caused my credit score to what did you do with that money i, I thought put you were going to invest that into wholesaling. So I, I did so okay. I, I put it into i put it into uh to wholesaling uh, but it does take it my credit credit score took a hit it dropped by like 130 points by maximizing that much debt on my limit Mm -hmm. then i started slowly paying it back through wholesale fees and then my credit after i paid off enough of it my credit got back up to a a point where i started getting exception for zero percent credit cards again and then i just balance transferred my remaining debt onto the new zero percent credit cards for another 12 months and then ended up paying them all off with the wholesale proceeds so your advice of not doing it's because you you kind of screwed up your points but it could have been very very, very dangerous had you not been oh, responsible. Yeah. Right. I'm, I mean, I mean, $90,000 to a 22 year old. 
Young so fella. I, right, I was I was a very nice dead. new car. Right, I was very <laughs> dedicated. So I knew this was not messing around money. This is only going into the business. business. Yeah, so I, I, I was able to pay it back, but I have seen other people that they've done this strategy and they just ended up in a bunch of credit card debt because it's, they it's didn't just, spend it's very, it on the right it, things. It's commitment. And unfortunately, the, t- the time is running low, but I want to have you back. I am so thrilled yeah. that Matthew brought you together. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, I Matthew. Really am. I know. Thank you. You have so much stuff, so fun. And I, yes, I would like to have you back. Yeah, let me know. Thank you. I couldn't even um, speak Spanish, but... Um, Amigos, tenemos un montón de información. Tengo tres. I do have three questions from a lady that we're going to have okay. to answer them. Maybe, um, well, um, let's gonna, let's try to answer sure. them to her. She sent me a private text message and said to me, oh, Betty Carballo. She wanted to know what wholesaling is, but she also wanted to. Just those three questions. So what is the process of wholetailing? So wholetailing <laughs> is the same as wholesaling, but instead of getting it as an end buyer, you list it on the MLS and sell to a retail buyer. So that's retail selling and wholesaling at the same time. So that's our first question. How are you able to do that? It's very How tricky. Am I gonna, it's yeah, a gray area. I don't do it. A super great area yeah. because I'm not going to list a property that you do not have a right. date so, on your... Okay, so I don't do this, but mm-hmm. the way to do this is to properly disclose across all the channels so you disclose to your seller that you'll be real real so the property they feel all comfortable right you it. have to disclose 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 so that's that's wholesale uh, okay well then thank you <laughs> okay a good way to get the pin of properties is to go to the uh, county assessor's website you can look up by the common property address and find their pin and when it comes to wholesaling after doing comps how is a deal negotiated so that everyone wins so very first thing is you have to make sure that the people that want to sell are selling for the right reason. If they're looking to sell at a price that makes sense because they're trying to get out of a situation, then offer to provide a solution by getting rid of that property for them. But then tell them the only way I'm able to buy this property is at X price because I will bring in another buyer and they pay me a fee. You know, always always be transparent as possible. If you if you can't tell them that you're wholesaling, just let them know that hey, if you're not going to buy it, you know someone that will. Right. I have investors. I have. I work with several investors. Right. So I. I have partners that would be interested. Um, someone hung up the phone on me yesterday when I said that. But those things are going to happen. Not everybody's ready for you. Right. And um, we will continue this conversation. I know that the the time is up, Freddy. So thank you very much. Um, gracias, Fernando. No gracias, problem. Matthew. Te perdono, eh? <laughs> <laughs>
Cartago. Dimensión Latina FM. Baja a nuestra aplicación a través de Google Play. Búscanos como Dime la FM. Búscanos en TuneIn Radio. Como Dimensión Latina FM. Y visita nuestra página web. Dime la FM.com. 